Welcome to the Upgraded You podcast. Uh, today I have a, a very special guest. So this is a special edition of two Hungarian guys are speaking English podcast. So Laszlo G. Boros, who is a professor of pediatrics, is my guest today. Welcome, Laszlo. Hi, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, and introducing me as a professor of pediatrics at UCLA. I'm a biohacker just like yourself. Um, I am very much involved in uh, uh, integrative medicine. Uh, I also study standard medicine, but my heart is with alternative integrative approaches. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. So that the reason um, I really wanted to have this conversation, especially in English, yeah. because uh, I have a lot of uh, English speaking followers and friends uh, around the world. And uh, many times when I post a study, a research or anything on my Facebook page uh, regarding to ketogenic diet or deuterium depletion or other subjects, I somehow feel that they are uh, not really can um, connecting the dots in this case. Now, to be honest, I don't know anybody in the whole world who can connect these dots better than you. So I thought maybe you could save me a lot of time. Sure, sure, sure. I'm very happy to uh, cover some of the kind of dot connecting biochemistry and uh, integrative medicine and exercise and, and physical well-being. Uh, those are also very interesting and, and top topics in, in, in health, of course. Sure. So let's talk about ketogenic diet. However, it seems like it's only a fad, which, you know, at one point, like every other fad, we are just fade out. But it seems like this stays here longer than normal fashion, diet fashions are uh, staying. So, so let's, could you explain what is actually ketogenic diet? Well, this is not a trend. Um, the, the truth is, finally, with ketogenic diets, we have reached the biochemical scenario that needs to be discussed when it comes to human nutrition. And uh, <clears throat> simply, this is um, just uh, a matter of how our body functions and how we generate energy and how we move around and how we move our body parts and how we generate energy for that and what are the very basic components of, of being alive. That's, mm -hmm. that's how uh, deep and, and thorough the, the type of information that deliver when we talk about ketogenic diets. Uh, ketogenic diet is practically the highest octane gasoline or fuel that you can put in your body. <clears throat> this is just practically just to cover in lay terms mm -hmm. uh, what ketogenic diets are or ketosis is. Uh, but practically you use your mitochondria just to touch on biochemistry a little bit. You use your mitochondria to produce energy or ATP, adenosine and triphosphate, and then moves your muscles that makes your brain think that actually the common currency in energy exchange in the human body and in every living organism. And uh, <clears throat> this energy, this ATP is, is the easiest to, to produce from fat. And the reason for that is that uh, we, we need hydrogen or protons to move these very special proteins in our mitochondria that generate this ATP. We call it complex five or ATP synthase. I'm just using these terms so mm -hmm. your audience can maybe follow up with the scientific literature if they, if they pursue so. But <clears throat> practically our mitochondria uh, utilizes hydrogen and oxygen only. Carbon dioxide, we breathe it out. So uh, practically the, the, the air that contains oxygen uh, saturates um, your mitochondria, the mitochondrial matrix with oxygen, molecular oxygen atoms that are actually um, presented to protons in the mitochondrial matrix um, in, as elementary oxygen, which is very reactive uh, with oxygen and produces water. 
this is what we call metabolic water. And for the, the hydrogen or the proton to meet oxygen first, they have to come back from the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. And in the meantime, and in the process, they actually power, they rotate physically, mm -hmm. these uh, ATP synthase nanomotors. And uh, when they fall in the, in the matrix after spinning these nanomotors, oxygen is waiting for the hydrogen uh, or the protons and uh, hydrogen ions and, and uh, uh, metabolic water is produced. Now, <clears throat> as simple as it is, uh, fat carries the most hydrogen uh, per carbon, meaning that fats are the most saturated with hydrogens. And this is why we call them saturated fatty acids because this term, this scientific term is used uh, to determine how occupied a carbon or the chain of carbons are by hydrogen. And mm -hmm. this hydrogen is harvested from uh, carbon atoms in the mitochondria and throughout biochemical processes. And since um, fat or, or ketogenic substrates contain the highest, uh, most saturated, highest hydrogen content um, of the carbon skeleton that we are oxidizing, they yield the most metabolic water. And for that reason, they yield the most ATP. Mm -hmm. Just one question I have, I'm sorry. So you mentioned saturated fat. So I think for most people, when they hear saturated fat is, is naturally comes a question that isn't the, the saturated fat, what is, you know, we here for decades should not eat or limit uh, because that causing uh, cardiovascular diseases and other problems. So that's what we hear for decades, right? Yeah, but obviously it's not true because if you just look at population health in general, mm -hmm. as far as metabolic diseases, that's just a big lie. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now we have the epidemiological evidence of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, human health or social health or social um, kind of patterns did not get healthy or did not get more um, healthy simply because of dietary modifications. Actually, we modified our diets uh, to the wrong direction. We, we don't uh, eat enough fat nowadays. Mm -hmm. We don't utilize enough saturated fat to produce energy. Actually, the, the American cardiological societies uh, are changing their views. Um, mm -hmm. they, they are actually reverting uh, old arguments about the healthy fat composition of healthy fat, because they know now based on population epidemiology and population diseases and chronic diseases that actually the carbohydrate rich diet or limiting fat intake is really not the, mm. the, the necessary means of mm. keeping people healthier. Mm. Uh, and obviously they seem to, uh, start learning a little bit of biochemistry because it's really not an argument being, you know, it's just simply just a very simple approach as like when you go to the gas station, what kind of gasoline or what kind of uh, uh, fuel you put in your car. If you have a diesel engine, you put diesel gasoline or diesel mm -hmm. uh, in your car. If you have a, a, a gasoline engine, you put gasoline and probably if you have enough money, then you can put the highest octane gasoline mm -hmm. in your car because those are more expensive. <clears throat> your car is, is going to consume less of that though. So you may not pay more to cover the same distance. Um, unfortunately, with our body, we don't have this flexibility. We do have to uh, supply our mitochondria with a high and saturated hydrogen supply, proton supply using carbon skeletons. And those are hydrocarbons or fat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, glucose or carbohydrates have uh, about half of the hydrogen compared to the, the carbon and oxygen that they carry. Meaning that if you look at, for example, a um, fatty acid, like a six carbon fatty acid compared to a six carbon carbohydrates, 
carbohydrate, you're going to see that carbohydrates have more oxygen per carbon mm -hmm. and have less hydrogen. So practically relatively to the amount of carbons or the number of carbons that they contain. And obviously oxygen has to be removed before acetyl coenzyme A, the basic fuel of, uh, of, uh, of the mitochondrial TC cycle or mm -hmm. Krebs Sengeji cycle uh, is supplied. We use uh, acetyl coenzyme A, which is a two carbon uh, molecule with saturated, uh, one carbon is saturated with, with hydrogens and those are the hydrogens that are harvested mm -hmm. uh, for ATP and energy production. So uh, truthfully, when you look at the basic biochemical principle, set of principles behind healthy human cell function, you only have one fuel, which is optimal. And that is practically uh, keto bodies. And this is how your body is set up to operate. This is mm -hmm. what you reach after sleep. This is what your... Uh, what your um, gut flora, your, your gut bacteria and yeast are trying to synthesize for you to absorb from carbohydrates while they are harvesting uh, deuterium, this heavy hydrogen isotope, which we're gonna cover in a minute. I don't wanna um, get into this discussion before you advise me so, but practically there are some tricks and mm -hmm. there are some, some very important elements besides of carrying much more hydrogen per carbon uh, using without oxygen, using uh, hydrocarbons or fat. Uh, there's also a an advantage that relates to one of the stabilizer mm -hmm. types of hydrogen. So, uh, so what you are explaining yeah. is is very much upside down compared to what we studied or learned from authorities in the last few decades. Uh, because what they said, like we have to limit strongly the saturated fats, so we did, right? But then we had right. to, so we had to switch it to something. We have to eat something, so definitely carbohydrates went up. But also because we further down had to regulate uh, saturated fat, we started to introduce polyunsaturated fats as seed oils or uh, or uh, hydrogenated oils for cooking and everything, and apparently these seed oils plus the carbohydrate, it seems like almost like a, a nuclear attack on our system, right? Yeah, listen, I mean, I, uh, yes, indeed. I mean, look at just in general, how the human race, especially the westernized, so-called more developed, economically mm -hmm. more developed human race look like. I mean, if you just look at some of the statistics in the US, there are, states where 50 percent almost 50 close to 40 percent of people are have a mass body index index over 30 meaning that they are obese they mm -hmm. are severely obese uh, <clears throat> that's the same almost throughout uh, the u.s wherever you go uh, and now unfortunately also in europe and and also in 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 middle europe or or in hungary per se yes or, or in Poland, or you just name it, uh, people are getting obese simply because they don't eat enough fat mm -hmm. and they eat too much sugar. Yes. Because as sugar is really not a very optimal or very elegant uh, use of substrates for mitochondrial functions or energy production, and because cleaning up glucose to be ready for mitochondrial processes it takes several metabolic steps and enzyme reactions. That's a very expensive and a very um, dirty type of fuel for, for simple mitochondrial functions. And for that reason, our body synthesizes fat as a storage molecule mm -hmm. from glucose rather than forcing it into mitochondria because mm -hmm. there are obviously risks involved in oxidizing uh, uh, carbohydrates because mm -hmm. of this stabilized dope composition. But practically our fat is trying to depose the fuel that is unable to burn in the form of fat because fat is a very good storage molecule also simply because it can be used in the 
um, in the in the phases of our life when we are not able to eat, for example, when we sleep, when we have physical exercise, when we uh, actually challenge our body, uh, we have to burn fat uh, at some point to be able to come up or cover the energy needs that are necessary uh, between satiety periods that are necessary to supply our body with energy. And fat is the storage molecule. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, if you cannot use your mitochondria efficiently, if you deliver mitochondrial, if you deliver damage to your mitochondria using too much or eating too much sugar or, or eating too much uh, proteins or amino acids, then uh, you, the only way you can, you can uh, um, um, store uh, glucose is practically to synthesize them into fatty acids. And we do, we do know that mm. this is the mechanism how hibernation occurs in animals. They start eating uh, f uh, fruits and, and high fructose containing fruits in the far time. And they surely, since fructose 6-phosphate is a very strong signal and it's a very efficient substrate to produce uh, fat in, mm. in animals, especially in animal liver that get, gets deposited, um, then that's how we look like. Uh, that's how the human race starts start looking like uh, uh, a species ready to hibernate because of the stored fat. So yeah. may I have a question yeah. now? May I have a question because that's very interesting what you say. So what I'm trying to translate it to my, my brain, what you say. So what you say basically is when we eat, let's say fructose containing uh, fruits, that's a signal to the body to to probably winter is coming so start um, improving your fat storage because well who knows when you have the next chance to have this opportunity and this is basically on your about your survival yeah now okay so let's just talk about temperate uh, mm -hmm. climate because there's there are seasons and there are hibernating mm -hmm. animals uh, if you look at the fruits from late May or early June all the way through summer to the fall, you're going to see a double or triple increase in fructose versus glucose ratio in the composition of sugar in, in, in fruits, meaning that uh, truly you cannot get fat on early season fruit simply because they have more glucose mm -hmm. and they have less fructose. But <clears throat> as you approach the fall, grapes, uh, apples, uh, uh, and pears are very high in fructose and surely animals start consuming those um, um, fruits because they have to hibernate. And that, if, even if they don't hibernate, they still have to build up fat mm -hmm. to survive in the winter, winter when, uh, when food is, is sparse. So as you said, indeed, nature regulates this uh, phenomenon, what we know is fat deposition or fat storage, mm -hmm. especially in wild animals, simply it follows seasons. And the animals know, animals, animals they do know what to eat in certain seasons. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, when they get ready for the, for the winter, because the temperatures are cooling down, they start eating uh, high fructose containing fruits, especially in, in the North, Northern Hungarian uh, forestry, simply because <clears throat> that's true of the bears, the wild boars, the shakars, you know, mm -hmm. the jackals, you know, they, they are actually, uh, and all the migrating birds. The migrating birds also put up fat or build up fat to a certain ratio to be able to uh, fly several thousand miles or kilometers without drinking or eating. They have to produce a lot of metabolic water and mm -hmm. they can only do this from saturated fat mm -hmm. in an efficient manner. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, if, if we see, if I see this correctly, Either glucose, fructose definitely seems like that, but also ketone bodies are not only energy substrates, but they're a lot more than that. They are signaling molecules, right? 
That's right. So, mm -hmm. and, and that is pretty new to the, to the science to understand that, especially regarding to keto, ketone bodies. So, so what, would, what would be the benefit beyond a substrate of ketone bodies? What is the benefit of ketone body as a signaling molecule? Well, and again, this is actually a long story. This goes back to almost 30 some years of research because these PPAR gamma, I'm not sure if you are. I heard about that, yes. Like, yeah, PPAR, the PPAR, these, these proximal proliferator regulating factors are fat, practically. These are ketone bodies. These are mm -hmm. actually ketones. And they are also long chain saturated fatty acids. So, and this has been long, this has been known for a long time that these PPAR receptors, they respond to fatty acid composition. Mm -hmm. That means if you eat more fat, if you eat more ketone bodies, then you signal your cell that actually you can deliver energy through various cell organelles or cellular organelles, including mitochondria and peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are just like mitochondria, they are able to modify and oxidize fatty acids. And peroxisome modify fatty acids for mitochondrial metabolism. So <clears throat> ketone bodies and ketones are very strong ligands to upregulate the, prolifer the proliferation of, of peroxisomes, which are essential cellular organelles for fatty acid storage, fatty acid modifications, and fatty acid oxidation. They produce uh, hydrogen peroxide. This, uh, this is why they call them peroxisomes. They produce hydrogen peroxides, which is broken down into metabolic water, cytoplasmic metabolic water, in response to an enzyme reaction called enzyme reaction called catalase. Mm -hmm. So, so, so practically, it's 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 the clearest, the, the cleanest, and the most efficient signaling molecule ketone or ketone bodies are the most efficient signal molecules to build up an oxidative pattern and oxidative capacity uh, for your cells. And uh, this is why uh, your dietary, uh, only, almost like your visual contact with your diet or your, your, your food selection always depends on on, on like what is your need as far as building or burning or oxidizing fatty acids, mm -hmm. either for storage, for hibernation or for, for active life or hunting uh, when it comes to predators in the, in the, um, in the um, temperate uh, forest. So, so practically they do know uh, what life cycle, what food to eat, and of those very important signal molecules are the ketones or the ketone bodies that either your food provides or your gut bacteria provide for you. Uh, your gut bacteria is always trying to provide a few ketone bodies for you. Uh, you can actually eat or overeat their capacity to burn that sugar, to burn, to break down sugars, to produce ketone bodies, but practically, mm -hmm. This is just an endless game of, of um, uh, selecting the appropriate type of food using their signaling patterns to actually adjust your body to the environmental exposure to the environmental challenges and the, avail and the availability of food uh, from um, either from your life kind of surrounding uh, uh, living uh, organisms or, or living uh, creatures around you, meaning that if you are a predator or you are a herbivore, you select your 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 food based on ketone composition. Even the cows, even the plant-eating animals, even the the, the birds that uh, eat uh, fruits, uh, um, for example, in 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 the fall, for example, birds that that you know, they prone to eat fruits. They also, they, because of their gut bacteria, they also absorb ketone bodies and that's their signaling molecules. They burn fat. So basically what you are saying is, and, and this is what people has to switch their brains sometimes a little bit, that one thing is Everything. what the certain animal is eating. It could be fruit, it could be grass, it could be anything. 
at the end of the day in the in the gut it's gonna turn into fatty acid right so at the end of the day everybody every single creature is exactly. on a ketogenic diet exactly well I, or, or not a ketogenic diet yeah, but yeah, but living yeah. on, on the fatty acid yeah we we, we call it metabolic ketosis the, the mm -hmm. diet may contain carbohydrates and, sure. and 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 sugars and and proteins mm -hmm. but your your gut microbiome this is why absorption and digestion is such is such a slow process uh, simply because you want to make sure that mm -hmm. your food which may contain fat or which may, which may contain carbohydrates depending on the season and, and your mm -hmm. food selection your gut bacteria turn them into fatty acids anyhow or ketone bodies anyhow simply mm -hmm. because they need this heavy hydrogen isotope this deuterium for their growth because they are bacteria they are prokaryotes so so practically this exchange of this heavy isotope to the light isotope of, of hydrogen uh, and powering the nanomotors with this light hydrogen is practically the key to health mm -hmm. and and this is what is this is why ketone bodies and ketones are so that these are so um, determining of uh, of of how your health or how your performance how your muscle shrink how your focusing how your cognitive functions how mm -hmm. your mental abilities how your sleep patterns will eventually uh, kind of even out or adjust to a kind of a, mm -hmm. a healthy uh, ketosis, which is metabolically always uh, to be uh, achieved. Uh, uh, and this is the purpose of all the players and all the ingredients and all the absorption mechanisms and, mm -hmm. and enzymatic reactions to break down food. The ultimate um, goal is practically to turn into turn everything into fat as much mm -hmm. as possible obviously if you're overeating carbohydrates or, or proteins you don't have the capacity to turn everything into fat so then you start absorbing uh, more carbohydrates but actually there's a lot of crosstalk even between circulation and the gut microbiome mm -hmm. to actually supply the body with with ketones for example, from lactic acid, you synthesize propionic mm -hmm. acid using your gut bacteria and, and marathon runners, they use this metabolic switch mm -hmm. simply just to protect their nanomotors and, and muscle strength. So we know that one thing is information, the other is experience. So definitely you as a professor, you have all the information, but now you have also the experience because you are on ketogenic diet for years. So... So what was your experience when you switched to the real deal, to the ketogenic diet? What was your aha moment? You said like, well, I think I have to do this. Yeah, so, uh, well, my background is that I had a twin, identical twin who unfortunately died in 2006 of esophageal cancer. And uh, I just, and I was also diagnosed with metaplasia, which is a kind of a thick, um, esophagus and and uh, you know since we were identical twins and I'm really not keen on seeing doctors or oncologists I've had to wait, wait a second just just so you're a doctor right I am a doctor yes okay indeed. but you don't want to see doctors okay later on we're gonna talk about no, this okay no I don't want to see okay doctors. continue I, continue I, please just, just only when I shave and look in the mirror that one got doctor it. who I see is that's just <laughs> planning for me got it so so I I started you know, thinking of biochemistry that I have learned through colleagues and collaborations. And uh, I have been working with Dr. Gabor Shomyai, who is one of the um, um, world authorities on deuterium depletion, this heavy hydrogen isotope mm. that breaks these nanomotors. And he determined in his work by his experiments that actually deuterium, this heavy isotope is necessary heavy hydrogen isotope is necessary for cancer cell growth and also for bacterial propagation, yeast growth and, and so on, and chronic inflammation. But once you deplete deuterium in your body, then you can actually prevent uh, carcinogenic events or you can slow down 
cell, prefer cell proliferation, especially transform cells significantly. So I, I started on, on um, deuterium depletion. First, I started on deuterium depleted water, and then I learned as our biochemistry course was advancing, I learned that actually the best way of depleting deuterium for mitochondrial metabolism is eating fat, mm -hmm. natural fat. So basically because you take in less deuterium already, so you have less to deplete. Would that be correct? In the, in, that's right. So you eat less deuterium. You mm -hmm. eat less deuterium in food, and that depletes deuterium in your mitochondria. That's the deepest and the most advanced way of, of uh, depleting deuterium. And if you combine this with, with hydrogen gas inhalation, uh, <clears throat> then you can even add to these effects. But uh, <clears throat> I, so I, I started on ketogenic diet or eating ketogenic diet around, I would say 2010. Uh, four years after my, I was I was drinking deuterium depleted water, but then I added the ketosis or ketogenic, ketogenic type diet to my regimen, and uh, ever since I'm just doing fine. Uh, and and truthfully, uh, I feel a, a lot better as far as um, cognitive functions, as mm -hmm. far as being able to focus on things, being, being able to, to write. I do a lot of editorial work. I do a lot of reviews. I review a lot of scientific papers. I work interactively with editors um, of various scientific journals. I handle a lot of manuscript uh, issues. I do organize for peer reviews in the, for the medical literature. I do teach, I deliver talks. And I also advise uh, uh, colleagues, uh, doctors who want to know more about the biochemistry of, mm -hmm. of deuterium depletion or deuteronomics, uh, that's the name of the field. Now what we use and, and, and these collaborations are now getting uh, wider and wider. I just got a request from one of the European armies. I'm not gonna name the country, but uh, there are a number of countries where the highest level of, of military operations are asking for the type of information that we can deliver through mm -hmm. medical deuteronomics. So it's, 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 it's getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think where it matters, where strength, focusing, mental stability, emotional uh, balance matters. Uh, they they learn about this diet mm -hmm. now. So I let's talk about the athletes should. then, because I think you know athletes would be a very uh, good area to to discuss the the ketogenic diet. And uh, just generally, I just for the, the the viewers, I just let me say that sports science today is claiming, especially if somebody is in a endurance type of event, let's say triathlon. They say that an athlete has to eat between six to six to ten grams of carbohydrates per day per body weight kilogram, which is, you know, eighty kilo athlete will might might eat or consume uh, eight hundred grams of carbohydrate, uh, according to this calculation, which for most people think this is what you have to do to perform on a high level. However, it seems on ketogenic diet, you don't need all these carbs and you're performing just as high or higher. Yeah, I just wonder who gives these recommendations or what this is the official, by the way. Biochemical knowledge would support is because there's none. I mean, this is uh, practically probably the worst diet that you can eat if you, if you are looking for endurance. If 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 you if 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 you want to um, uh, supply your muscles with optimal fuel, then you definitely need to eat low deuterium, uh, long chain saturated animal fat, mm -hmm. and the fat comes from grass fed animals or 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 pasture raised uh, animals. It's it's practically just so critical, and the reason for that is um, actually fat contains sugar and 
it contains sugar in the form of glycerol because triglycerides by definition are a half sugar molecule uh, carrying three free fatty acids. And this is why we call them triglycerides because a glycerol, which can be used in gluconeogenesis to produce uh, glucose or carbohydrates or other type of carbohydrates, those are available from fat as well. Uh, so you don't need to eat carbohydrates or sugar of that quantity, you can actually cover that with fat, but fat also gives you the advantage of carrying low carb, low deuterium, uh, long chain saturated fatty acids, which are the optimal fuels. May I have a question so, here? Uh-huh. So, but would that be true that it only works what you said, like, you know, the body is able to create uh, carbohydrates from triglycerides if you are not really supplying yourself with exogenous carbohydrates. That's right. The okay. process is called gluconeogenesis, and it happens in the liver. Uh, liver cells are able to produce glucose uh, and release glucose into the bloodstream. Um, and every cell is able to produce glucose from, from glycerol, but liver cells are also able to dephosphorylate glucose to cut off the phosphate from the six carbon of glucose and actually release glucose into the circulation. And that's practically the same glucose that you would be eating. And uh, again, because of the gluconeogenesis process, it generates just as enough glucose as it is necessary to supply uh, uh, tissue functions, for example, brain cell functions. They have to, produce, they have to use 25% of brain substrates or brain, brain um, cell neurocytes or brain cell substrates, 25% of those have to be carbohydrates. And that's because we produce a lot of neurotransmitters and these neurotransmitters mm -hmm. are are, are net synthesized or new synth mm -hmm. newly synthesized from glucose, or there are some uh, uh, very important uh, uh, neurotransmitters. This is one of the criticism. I'm sorry to, to ask, you said neurotransmitters. So I hear a lot of times that they say, yeah, but you still need to have to take sugar because that sugar you will need for neurotransmitters like uh, serotonin. And if you don't take the, the sugar, you will not have enough serotonin. So basically, you will yeah, be one again, sad person. Yeah, again, again, your body can produce glucose from fat. Right. And it's it, it actually, it, it, it is not the safe sugar if it comes from a dietary source, especially from a food source, from a fruit source, mm -hmm. because or, or, or vegetables that are grown or cane sugar, which are actually exposed to high deuterium environments. So uh, your body can produce sufficient glucose to supply your brain with, um, uh, with, with uh, sugars or with carbohydrates for neurotransmitter mm -hmm. synthesis. Uh, it is, you actually have to uh, burn a lot of sugar through active muscle function to, to, to actually stay in ketosis. It's called exercise ketosis. And, and yeah, high endurance sports activities and, and sports span, they might be able to burn a lot of sugar and stay closer to ketosis simply because of the physical demand they uh, use during exercise or long distance running, for example, the, the question is how much damage do you deliver to your mitochondrial nanomotors while burning high deuterium glucose instead of using low, low deuterium glycerol mm -hmm. uh, from, from fat? Because that's, that's a big player here. Um, and I have to kind of be very critical of this simply because if, Attila Jozef, the very famous Hungarian poet genius, if he wrote his, his, his poem these days at the Danube, um, the Danube River, actually he would say like, you know, sportsmen die early. 
not not moms or 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 cleaning ladies mm-hmm. die mm-hmm. early simply because sportsmen die early these days if you just li- listen or if you just look at what well, they are in some occasions they are not even able to compete just i just heard uh, you know the us open tennis games one of the female com- contenders she had to quit the race because she developed an autoimmune disease Yes. Uh, during the game, uh, we just had a famous Hungarian water polo player dying of cancer at 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 relatively early age. There are. I, I also have, by the way, I also have, by the way, uh, very high level athletes I'm working with personally, and many of them have uh, autoimmune disease, which is exactly. which is ridiculous. They are very young people, exactly. like twenty two to twenty seven. And they were already having all these conditions. Exactly. So, w- exactly. Would you would you then agree with that that probably uh, a, a good diet would be something that that actually natural, of course, it should be because you mentioned already many times that grass fed, uh, let's say, um, uh, cows. Yep. Mm-hmm. So so natural. It should be seasonal. You also also mentioned that you know, like for example, mm-hmm. with uh, some of the fruits, you mentioned that mm-hmm. it should be uh, deuterium depleted as a lifestyle. That's right. Uh, That's it right. should be most likely because this is where the the arrow uh, pointing that it should be most likely ketogenic or at least seasonal or cyclical right. or ketogenic, and That's if right. possible, local. So would you agree with That's these? Right. Okay. Yeah, all these, all these uh, pillars of nutrition are very true when it comes to, you know, physical exercise-related life activities. Mm-hmm. Meaning that um, if you exercise on a high carbohydrate diet, it's practically you you are trying to. Um, run your formula on race engine on a the lowest octane gasoline there is available at the gas station mm-hmm. that's and it's going to take a toll on your engine meaning mm-hmm. that you are not going to be able to perform and and if you do want to perform then you have to over 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 uh demand you have to over um you you, you just have to kind of um uh, abuse your engines uh, to be able to deliver the type of of performance that you're ex- expected mm-hmm. of you. Uh, it's really not the optimal. Uh, carbohydrates are really not the optimal fuel for our nanomotors. And just a comparison, these nanomotors in the mitochondria, they spin around uh, 9,000 rotations per minute. Mm-hmm. So and basically, so- we, we, we discuss two areas. So one of them is we, we discussed deuterium depletion, and uh, I think we can agree on that. The best deuterium depletion is having a low deuterium food, probably. Right. That. Okay, so that's that would be a natural ketogenic diet. I, I mm-hmm. think we can agree on that. Mm-hmm. Now, could you, uh, could you uh, list for me a few um, strategies where we can deplete deuterium? So already we have some amount. And we would like to deplete it. So how can how can we do that? Yeah, the best way to deplete is just to not to take in deuterium. Correct. To start exactly just like as you learn about these phenomena, you need to cut deuterium consumption. You need to cut carbohydrate and protein consumption um, as much as you can, and and your diet will become uh, more like internal organs, liver pate. Uh, kidneys, uh, internal organs, and fatty meat mm-hmm. diet, steaks, T-bones, filet mignon, the fatty ones, simply because those contain high uh, fat, and all have to all those have to come from grass-fed or pasture kind of grazing. So basically, it's a nose-to-tail type of eating, right? Can we say that? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's what it is. I mean. You know, you can get, uh, you know, fat from oil, uh, oil, oils and, and seeds, but those are plant fats. Those are not really healthy for us. Uh, we, we are not plant eaters. You know, if, if you uh, look at, for example, a typical uh, herbivore, 
uh, like a, like a cow, just 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 as an example, or the goats, they have five stomachs mm-hmm. to eat all the, the the fibers and the carbohydrates that are or proteins that are available in in, in grass, and obviously uh, some of it comes out undigested, and they mm-hmm. spend practically a whole day just to try to digest the greens and the grass they ate in about an hour or two hours, then the rest of the day is practically just how to process those. And they have to chew them several times. Uh, They go in different parts of the stomach for different treatments. I mean, we, you know, from biology, how that goes. So, so we don't have that. We humans, we don't, we, we actually have a gut, which is for carniv- for the carnivore, fat eater, scavenging type of, and seasonal, very very little seasonal fruits, whatever we can gather, you know, in a competition with with wild animals. We 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 wouldn't have access to much fruits if we lived in the wild, simply because, and I'm not sure if you saw, for example, in the northern Hungarian mountains, if you saw like a a wild apple tree or a pear tree uh, uh, in the riping season when the wild boars got to it. I mean, it looks like it, it's just, I mean, they go crazy for this stuff. Mm. And this is how trees propagate themselves through the fruits because they cause diarrhea in the wild animals and they're, they're, that's how the seeds are spread. Those are not for nutrition. Mm-hmm. Those are they, they don't have nutritional value. Simply mm-hmm. they are just to propagate the trees. So basically, and, trees, trees, and plants are selfish. That's what you are trying to say. Of course, of course, and they <laughs> they try to protect themselves. Sure. you know they don't, you know, except grass, which grows very f- f- fast, and it, and it and it you know gives sunlight uh, uh, and photosynthesis a, a great deal simply because of the surface land and the surface area that grass can grow on and the surface they provide. Um, for to produce organic material, um, that, that's practically. I mean, it's you know those are the key to understand, you know, nutrition and the complexity of nutrition. Mm-hmm. How different anatomically animals look who actually are herbivores and how different they are when they become carnivores, and they depend on each other simply because that's how uh, the Lord had planned uh, biology just to be a compact and a functioning modality on, on earth. And, and, and obviously if you look at some of the, uh, you know, quantum physics and physical principles, just like things that may happen in the mitochondria, we are also very much part of the physical world. Uh, and, and we have to, and it's, it's a very narrow, range of physical inorganic chemistry principles that life is even available. And if you don't, if you don't understand these basics, uh, the human race will become a very defected or defective uh, race simply because of the diseases we harbor, the, mm-hmm. the, the health status that we, the cost that comes, the cost that comes with it. So it's, I mean, we are not going to the right direction, you know, simply if you look at all the, you know, these um, new ventures of, you know, delivering food, you know, this net, net pince, the net waiter and uh, go whatever, you know, you know, if, if every human being is going to have a soup, bowl of soup that was delivered on a motorcycle from a restaurant from the neighborhood, and uh, even though it's an electric motorcycle, let's say, and you put uh, electro, you put solar panels over the grassland, which kills the grass, and there is no carbon dioxide recycling. Biochemistry should be a very important part of all these industrial planning and all these economical uh, programs that are actually hunting human societies and mm-hmm. and human health, for that matter. So we should pay a lot more attention to these very mm-hmm. basic. Uh, no. substrate oxidation, mitochondrial functions, photosynthesis, nutrition, and so on to stay healthy no. and strong. 
Now, regarding to deuterium depletion, I mean, um, we are very blessed because uh, you mentioned already uh, Dr. Gabor Shomyai. So, so basically, if we talk about different kind of inventions uh, and understanding of uh, scientific data, and, and we praise these scientists because they come up with amazing stuff. So where, where would you put, and most people doesn't even know who is Gabor Shomyai, by the way, or what is deuterium depletion. So where would you put uh, Gabor in, in this scale, in this letter, like, you know, so Gabor is the forefather. He is the biggest authority of the biological application implications of deuterium depletion. He's the one who determined in very early experiments in the early 90s mm -hmm. of how important deuterium is for cell growth and how deuterium in water determines cell proliferation and cell transformation. Now, his work is kind of a continuation of some previous scientists and, and some previous experiments that were performed on yeast um, mm -hmm. uh, ATP synthase, where we could uh, determine that actually changing ATP synthase um, in normal human cells to the one that yeast use, which retain deuterium in, in and within the cell, the yeast cell for, for their growth, they would turn these cells into cancer cells. So by simply altering or changing the tumor hydrogen ratio in and within normal human cells, you can actually cause cancer. It's actually the, 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 the strongest um, chemical carcinogen or oncoisotope or deuterium practically is one of the oncostable So So basically just, just to make me understand, so the higher the saturation, of deuterium in this case, the, the in the cell, in the cell, of course, then or concentration, saturation we usually use when we attach hydrogen to carbon, mm, okay. for example. But, but the higher the concentration in a free form, yeah, concentration. Yeah. So the most likely there's there will be some kind of uh, cancerous. Uh, how would you describe? It's not just most likely. It's oh, okay. That's how cells that's how nice cells then. transform. Mm. Yeah, the, the transformation process of a normal cell into a carcinogenic phenotype it depends on the T. Wow. Okay. So so but then uh, I would ask the question. So if I or if we reverse the concentration. Then would you that make cancer? Practically, you can you can actually reverse these cells into their natural phenotype. So, so how come, uh, how come the word is not really into this so far? So now we are talking about the Gabor is talking about that for like 30, 40 years, and you maybe for oh, yeah. twenty. Oh yeah. So how come, oh, yeah. how come the word is not saying like, well, what the hell? Yeah, because of pharmaceutical operations. I mean, we know that mm. you know that's uh, that's really not the mainstream. So I, because mainstream. because basically. We already discussed that you can you can either deplete deuterium with different kind of activities, let it be a good diet or sport, probably, good sleep, definitely we already mentioned that, mm -hmm. or not eating that much deuterium with uh, processed food, sure, let's say. Sure, sure. So basically sure. now we step on a food of many industries. Would that be true? That's right. Yeah, wow. that's right. That's right. The food industry, the GMO industry, the pharmaceutical industry, they all work hand in hand um, to compromise human health practically. If you look at pharmaceutical operations, the third leading cause of human fatalities is practically medications and interactions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and, and all human diseases, the big majority of especially chronic diseases, they come from, from nutritional um, guidelines that are practically not considering the normal mm. biochemical functions of human cell mitochondria and deuterium depletion. Yeah, you name it. That's it. It is mm. as simple as that. And to to get this information, you have to listen to selected podcasts and information in the like whatever is available. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is how it is. 
you're right. So, so what would be your favorite depletion strategies or, or most efficient or some, some uh, strategy eat, that... Indeed, I eat fat or fatty, grass-fed, mm -hmm. natural habitat, animal produce. Um, I eat buffalo meat. I eat grass-fed cow mm -hmm. meat. I eat pasture-fed uh you know poultry if i feel like it and my potable water is the team depleted water and i only drink if i'm thirsty mm -hmm. and i only drink as much as 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 much volume is necessary to cure my thirst i don't mm -hmm. drink water excessively mm -hmm. i have to be thirsty for that and i sleep as long as i need to sleep i don't sleep a whole lot because my deuterium is not very high <clears throat> because the purpose of sleep is practically to push you into a metabolic ketosis. That's why you fall unconscious or sleep until you get into ketosis. And that's when mm -hmm. you wake up. The team depleting ketosis wakes you up. And this is how you actually start your day. Unfortunately, most people start with coffee and sugar or eat something like a, a pastry, mm -hmm. like a a piece cereal. of bread or mm -hmm. cereal or those kind of, you know, useless, you know, uh, material that is really not your natural food. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not your optimal food after waking up in a ketosis after a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. how, about, how about, um, cold therapy, hot therapy, uh, sweating cold therapies. Exactly. Whenever you utilize your mitochondria for heat consumption, uh, for heat production and uh, uh, whenever you utilize your mitochondria to, to oxidize more fat efficiently, mm -hmm. when you actually oxidize, uh, especially the tum depleter fat, that's just practically how your health is restored mm -hmm. or maintained. These, these are very critical, very important questions mm -hmm. and these are very important guidelines. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Same, same with the uh, breathing exercises? Breathing exercise is the same, exactly. You, you, you have to learn how to breathe to be able to use your mitochondria efficiently. Mm -hmm. And those breathing protocols are out there. Um, and I think you use the butaiko. Yes, sir. Am, am I correct? Um, that, that actually saturates your, your mitochondria with oxygen more efficiently. And, mm -hmm. and you just... And you also play with hypercapnia, which is the increase of CO2, which I didn't mention, but I wanted to touch on. If you eat ketogenic diets because you produce more carbon, carbon dioxide, also your tissue level of carbon dioxide is going to be higher. So your enzymes that produce net or anabolic reactions or substrates, for example, pyruvate carboxylase, mm -hmm. have higher carb carbon dioxide uh, partial pressure in your tissues. So your tissue mass, mass gets bigger. You're, you're, you're able to use metabolism more of an anabolic fa fashion simply because you're able to, to oxidize more, produce more carbon dioxide and use carbon dioxide for mm -hmm. carboxylation procedures, which are anab anabolic reactions. So mm -hmm. um, you can do it either to lightly strangulate your veins, meaning that you don't have uh, efflux, venous efflux. So that would be muscle. that would be katsu training, what I what that, we were discussing. That would be katsu training, yeah. Interesting. You can do this metabolically too mm -hmm. by with a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. And also with a uh, certain type of breathing exercises as, uh, and you can as slowing down the breathing exactly. and having exactly. a, a, a light air hunger yeah. yep. uh, while you're practicing. So that's basically Buteyko. Yep. yep, that's practically what it is. Yes. Wow, okay. So, so that's very interesting. So these are pretty much the things I wanted to cover with you. So I'm so glad that yeah, you know somebody can the connect the dots. Part directions yeah I'm, I'm the dot connecting guy. apparently <laughs> apparently you are the guy <laughs> all right so Laszlo I really appreciate your time and I I, sure. I hope that we're gonna get many questions and in, in case sure. we get many questions I would be so happy to 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 come back again in English in Hungarian anytime by the way but also in English because I see that this information is truly missing from sure. from the from the 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 internet and also the, from the biohacker um, community. community and seriously yeah. i'm I, i'm very serious about that you are the only person right now who is connecting all these dots today 
and has also a, a amazing knowledge on biochemistry. So, so it's you are always the go-to guy when I have a question, and I really appreciate that you always have the the the, the patient to to answer my questions because I have many. So I, uh, listen, I really thank good, you. Good, good, good questions are uh, teaching us also to face or phrase True. things. Uh, in a more late term, you know, I'm, I'm a medical biochemist. So some of the flux measurements and the metabolic control theories and metabolic control, so those are very complicated biochemical issues. And mm -hmm. I don't want people to, to, to be bogged down with some of those details, but what we can cover in a conversation like this uh, and connecting some of these dots that mm -hmm. everybody is asking, mm -hmm. I think that's the major benefit of, producing podcasts like this and if there are questions i'm very happy to discuss those with you. oh i have i will have many more don't worry about it of course <laughs> i really appreciate your time thank you and uh it, i think it turned out really well so I'm, I'm i'm very happy so thank you again for uh spending time with us sure thanks have a good evening thank you, you so too. much thank Bye. you